What's up, YouTube? I'm back, and I'm ready for another one. Now, this one's going to be kind of more upbeat. Lord, we've been crying. We've been laughing. We've been what was me in. We've been remembering. Today, the title says, Breakthrough Confessions of My 520-Pound Life. Yes, my 525-pound life. Ooh, I could eat, y'all. I can still eat. I just pray about it now. Anyway, my weight loss journey, eating disorder, and how being a hermaphrodite contributed to my eating disorder and my weight gain and my weight lost. Now, as you can see, I ain't skinny. But I ain't 520 pounds no more either. And I ain't never going back. Mm -mm. Anyway, let's go. Let's get into the story, y'all. Oh, yeah, and don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that post notification bell. I'll really appreciate it. I want to grow, and I want to grow on YouTube because I want to reach as many people as I can. I want to be the first one to pop up on that search engine because it's going to be somebody wanting to kill themselves and just looking on YouTube for entertainment to just get out of that zone. There's somebody that's probably made like me or born like me that needs some venting or some type of information or comfort. If any of you are like that and you run across my video, don't be afraid to hit me up. I will reach it back out to you. I am a YouTuber that will reach back out to you because I care and I'm doing this for a reason. God told me to do this. I did a lot of soul searching and I've been through a lot of stuff. So this is my confession. Let's go. I'm back. All right, let's start the story, y'all. Now, it started when I was a kid, of course. And if you went through all my other videos, it's a recap that everything is basically connected. So, the way I was born, a hermaphrodite, um, I was bullied, I was abused, but I'm still here. What's that saying? got my butt kicked, kicked some butt, but I'm still here. Yes. Um, what else? Who? There's so much. Oh, yeah, being raped. All that contributed to my weight gain and my weight loss throughout the years. So, six years old. Recap again. First time I got beat. How I coped with that was Twinkies. That's where it started, Twinkies. Oh, that's my favorite. I still love Hostess. Anyway, focus. Anyway, the whole point is, is that I put myself into food emotionally, and that wasn't healthy. And the years passed, I got bigger, wasn't thinking about no exercise. I just wanted to eat and watch the stories. And keep in mind, I'm this young, between 6 and 10, watching One Life to Live, All My Children, General Hospital, Young and the Restless, um, Loving. You know what I mean? Some of y'all know about that, but they canceled it. But anyway, back to the story. So basically, it was TV, comfortable bed, or comfortable room, and food at an early age. So that laid the foundation to how I started coping with things. It started early. And going back into my memories and being this age now, I can analyze my own self, which I did, from the time I can remember down to six to now. I thank God that he's bringing everything together so I, so I can heal in the process of talking to you and hopefully somebody's healing with me watching this. So 
between the years I gained weight up and down, up and down, and between the abuse and the teasing and the whew, the judging in school, I would go to school in elementary school. I'm going I'm to I'm keep in order. Elementary school is started. I will work in the kitchen. Keep in mind that I haven't told anybody that I'm a hermaphrodite. So I'm holding that in. I'm holding in getting beaten, being embarrassed from home. I'm holding in being bullied and called a faggot at school. I'm holding in the girls don't want to play with me because I'm the only boy around them. Go play with the boys. So my friend was fooled, really. People were cool with me. People, hey, how you doing? Laughed at my jokes, but no, food was my friend. So I'll go over to the cafeteria and work and work for food like I ain't never ate at home and my mama cooked good. Rest her soul. Ooh, I miss it. Focus. Working in the kitchen, getting cookies and cakes and pies and enough to take home, but I ate it all there. I ate large amounts of food even at a young age. It was scary. So, when folks start teasing about my weight, more so than calling me a faggot, it turned into an issue. I was uncomfortable, I couldn't play. Still in elementary school, fat, fat. Just all over the place. When folks started teasing me, it started bothering me and I started having body issues. I started being self-conscious. Um, things were harder to do. I never, I didn't want to go outside. I just kept watching TV, watching the stories, eating, crying. And I finally got to the point to where I hit puberty. Now, I'm in junior high school now. I hit puberty and things start changing. I start feeling a certain type of way. I get crushes and stuff now, but still I'm not expressing it. But to myself, it's like, ugh, I look like this and everybody else look like that. People jogging in gym, I'm, I'm slowly walking. Of course I can't get dressed in gym, so they let me get dressed in the bathroom. Connected story, doctor's note, me being a hermaphrodite. Just keeping you guys up, just in case you guys skip that little button. I know what you do. Anyway, no shade. I do it too. But yeah, gym class was awkward. Everything was awkward and all of that took an effect on me. And all I could do was couldn't wait to come home, sit in the room by myself, because I did my homework at school. Sit at home by myself, listen to my music, take a shower, eat large amounts of food, go to sleep and then go back to school and get ridiculed again. So this went on for up until the eighth grade and when we and I graduated. That summer, I was nervous about going to high school. I was I was so nervous. I'm like, oh my God, okay, I'm already being called a faggot. I'm already being judged about my weight. And I'm even bigger than I ever was. I had reached 290 pounds. 290 pounds. Going to the ninth grade, being 14, that ain't right. That ain't right. That ain't right. It's not. It's not right. So I was I was just feeling awkward. I'm like, what am I gonna do? Summer's here. So my mother, rest her soul, was like a boot camp. She watched the refrigerator because I used to steal food when I was a kid. Um and not because I was hungry, because I was greedy, because my mother fed me well. I just had an eating disorder. I was eating my pain away. Nothing was never enough. It was never enough. I went through so much to wear, and I wanted to lose weight so bad. 
so I could have this big transformation when I walk into high school. I didn't want nobody from school to see me. I stayed at home and I went to the extreme. I didn't even know I had it in me. But like a phoenix, we burn, we burn, we overpower, and then we burn out. This was my high burn. I was up in the air with it. I had these ideas. First time I started writing stuff down, I write everything down. Everything is planned. I plan to try to plan everything out. So I'm writing down all of my notes. This is the beginning of the summer. We're not even out two days before I start planning my diet. Last day of school, I didn't even want to go because they was having all them stupid parties with all that stupid food and pizza parties and stuff. I didn't want to even be tempted anymore. So, I'm writing out my plan. I say, all I'm going to need is Top Ramen and Raisin Bran. That's it. Top Ramen and Raisin Bran. This is me at 13. About to be 14. August 24th, where it goes. And I'm, I'm, I'm sitting up here making realist, unrealistic diet plans. And then I put, it was, a, it was a large, large amount of chocolate bars in the freezer. And I was very smart at a young age. So I read it, they were laxatives. So I, I took the laxatives and stole, stole the whole box. And I read how many to take and what to do. And since I wasn't going to school, I knew what they did. And I would start eating lots and lots of food and then taking the laxatives and having it come out of me real quick. That's how my bulimia started. And I said, oh, okay, I can eat all this food and then it just come right out of me? That was a miracle to me. It's basically, I never seen anybody do it. I never seen it on TV. I just found it out for myself. So it started working, I started losing weight, but I think my mother had caught on, so I kind of slowed down a little bit. So. That kind of made me work harder and not eat less because she was on to me watching the refrigerator. I couldn't take no more because it was a lot of them. I just took one box. So I started exercising back to back to back every day consecutive, consecutively. And at that time, I was really, really into using have my Walkman all the time. And it was Michael Jackson's double CD that I listened to constantly because he had all that fast music and I could work to it and Mortal Kombat. I, I, I'm eclectic. I listen to all kind of music. So I'm doing all of this, working hard, moving, running, and I just see the weight shed off of me. It's just shedding. Then I start th eating and lots of food and throwing up at night when everybody go to sleep. Eating lots of food and throwing up. My mother would cook all this food and freeze it and put it in the freezer already made. So it was like I had all this access in everybody's sleep. And mind you, I told you that my mother drank a lot, so she slept hard. So I ate all I could and threw it up. All I could throw it up in the mornings. Um, doing my crunches at night, doing my crunches all throughout the day, all day I'm walking around the block you can ask anybody who knows me that lives around me I will walk all day so it came to a point to where I would throw up so bad I would pass out in the bathroom I wake up eventually but that wasn't good my bowels were erratic I was bleeding it got bad, but I didn't care because I had lost almost 80, 80 some pounds. I had lost a lot of weight and it was noticeable. So it kept going and kept going and kept going until it got really, 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 really bad. And this is me after graduation in high school I'm on my way to class I hadn't eaten anything keeping up with everything after this is after Benny's death after my father's death my bulimia comes back because it took a pause 
I was working, going to school, working, going to school. I was kind of focused and kind of throw it off and, you know, got used to myself after I got into the acting. So I started being normal. So I'm in college and it comes back. I pass out again. I just have a complete blackout. And throughout my life, I had a couple of blackouts with family members and they didn't realize what it was, but it was me not eating, having bulimia and some some um, Hispanic girl picked me up off the floor and asked me was I okay. I was right in the corner in study hall when I passed out. And I passed out leaning against the chair so nobody could, could tell. And when I woke up, blood was all under my butt. And they were, rushed me to the nurse and they, they then they said they need to I need, need to call the hospital. They rushed me to the nearest hospital in Carson. Me not telling anybody anything. My friend from school picked me up and dropped me off at home. I was sick, throwing up blood for like two weeks. I'll never do that again. I almost ruptured my esophagus and I almost messed up my bowels. My, my bowel movements, I, I couldn't even have a bowel movement because they, it made them irregular and I didn't know it would get that bad. That was from all the diet pills over the years, throwing up, eating and throwing up. I ate so much I got up to 520 pounds. Within the utmost recent years of eight years ago, up until now, I've been struggling back and forth with my weight and in between. And I went all the way down to 190. So altogether, I lost 330 pounds, basically. And now that I've come to myself, I've looked back at my old self and learned my lessons and risen from my ashes. I know now that it's not a diet anymore, it's a lifestyle. And in order for you to live, you have to eat. And you have to eat the right things. You have to right, eat the right amount at the right time. And you have to do the proper exercise. No, I'm not skinny, but I'm not stupid. I'm not doing that anymore. I've grown up, I've learned, I've changed, and I'm eating healthier now. I'm not on a diet, I'm on a lifestyle. And I've changed miraculously. I've lost weight and I'll soon have my big reveal when I lose it all. Which y'all will notice through the videos, you know what I mean? <laughs> anyway, I thank you for listening to me. I appreciate you. And if you ever feel like you can't talk to anybody, there's nobody around that'll listen, do like I do. Do like I do now. I sit, I take a deep breath, and I just start talking to the Lord. I, talk, I start talking to him like he's sitting right next to me. Like he's just a friend sitting right next to me, and he's the only person I can talk to. And after you do that, you'll be amazed how much better you feel. Then write everything that you know you need to do for yourself down. Tell yourself the truth. Be honest with yourself first before you're honest with anybody else. Then you can start living. I love you. I appreciate you. And please don't hit, forget to hit those post notifications. Like, subscribe, and comment. Either way, I'm going to still be here, and I'm going to still have to tell my story. Thank you for listening, and I really appreciate you. Whew, this is episode four, y'all taking care of. Y'all ready for five? Mm -hmm. Y'all can just imagine what I'm about to talk about next. Love you. Phoenix Saga continues.